Hey guys, welcome to Bridge Kids. I'm so excited to be here. It's so good to see you and welcome to the second week of summer. Hey, summer means a whole new series. So who remembers what we've been talking about? We've been talking about focus. Focus means taking a closer look at things and we're gonna be taking a closer look at what faith means. Faith is trusting what you can't see because of what you can see. And to help us learn a little bit more about what the Bible says about faith, we're gonna kick it over to one of my friends who's been practicing the memory verse. Thanks, Ben. So excited to see you guys. Here is this month's memory verse. Hebrews 11.1. 1. Faith is being sure of what we hope for. It is being sure of what we do not see. Can you guys say this with me? Hebrews 11.1. 1. Faith is being sure of what we hope for. It is being sure of what we do not see. You guys did so great. Now let's stand up and worship Jesus together. Top for me, please. Mm -hmm. Prepping the top. Top is prepped. Prep the base. Prepping the base. Base is prepped. Mm -hmm. Tweezers. Tweezers. Here's where it gets really delicate. Mm -hmm. Wipe, 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 wiping, 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 wiping. Right. Wiped. Thank you. <clears throat> You're welcome. <sighs> right, close it up. 
closing it up. <laughs> you did it. Nah. We did it. <laughs> uh. Feed me. Feeding you. Mm -hmm. <sighs> mm. Mm. It's good. Mm -hmm. Hello, everyone. My name is Brandon. And I am John. This is the so-and-so show. Buddy, you okay? Oh, I'm fine. I'm fine, Brandon. I'm, I'm focused and no one's gonna catch me not focusing. Oh, what was that? Did you lose your focus? Oh, man! <laughs> okay, I'm gonna do better this time. Why, John? Brandon, I have struggled with being able to focus my whole life. There is, are always things competing for my attention. Yeah, like like having guests on the show. Yes, exactly, like having a guest on the show. It, it totally breaks my concentration. It's time for someone who knows stuff. Yeah. Seat. <laughs> yep, yeah, right there. Okay. One moment, please. All righty. What are you... Um... Hello, guten tag. How are you both? We're focused. We're good, Hans, thank you so much. Can you tell everyone who you are and what you know? Hello, my name is Hans Decibel. I am an audio engineer with a recent interest in Foley artistry. Huh? And what is that exactly? I am so glad you asked this question to me. Thank you. Many of the sounds we hear in film and in television are not recorded live but are inserted after the fact by a Foley artist. Oh, that's very interesting. So yeah. if I'm watching a movie and, yeah. and uh, I see someone walking up some, some creaky stairs, yeah. the stairs don't actually have to be creaky. They can be added later by a Foley artist. The this creaky yeah. is correct. Wow, that's, that's cool. W yeah. What's in the suitcase? I have brought with me here today a selection of audio properties that I use in the creation of my sound effects. I will now make the sound, and you will guess what is the sound. Oh, so it's like a game. Yeah. I have brought blindfolds. Oh, man. Okay. All right. Here, put it in my hand. I'm not going to look at them. Okay. Right. Okay, All I guess right. it goes like that. Huh. Okay. Oh, this makes it really hard to focus. Okay, John, you can focus with your uh, ears, too, you know. Oh, oh, yeah. That's right. That's right. Just listen. That's right. All right. All right, right, right. Okay, ready. Very good. That's the sound of a suitcase opening. This is correct. He hasn't started yet, John. Whatever, I am focused. Yeah. Okay, sound number one. Oh, oh, oh that, that, that sounds like my dog, Brutus, running down the hallway to greet me when I get home from work. Is that you, Brutus? Come here, Brutus, come here. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I have fooled you. This was not Brutus, but the sound of paper clips oh. on a cutting board making the tippy-tappy sound of canine claws on laminate flooring. Sound number two. Oh, uh, that's a horse! This is correct. <laughs> number three. Oh, I know. Oh, man, that sounds just like a bird flapping its wings. Whoa, where is it? <laughs> Sound number four. Oh, it's so cold in here. Is this snow on the ground? <laughs> no, it is just a bag of cornstarch. <laughs> oh, I, I'm, I'm slipping. I, I hope I don't fall and break a bone. Ouch! Oh. It's a pain! Ouch! Are, are, you, are you all right? Do we need to call an ambulance? Ha! Uh, ha! What? I have fooled you again. This was only the sound of celery ribs. Oh! Wow, that was incredible! Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'll never look at celery the same way again. Mm. And yeah. cornstarch, that's amazing. Yeah, this is <laughs> correct. <clears throat> Ordinary things become extraordinary when you open your eyes and ears 
to the possibilities. Oh, that's a really cool way to put it. I will the now explore the space to find ordinary things to make extraordinary. Ah, uh, ah, uh, oh, okay. I think this is a good idea. Yeah, I'm sure it'll be fine. Uh huh. <laughs> oh. oh! What in the world? Ha! Ah! Ha! Ah! I have fooled you for a third time. By dropping this box of knives and forks on the ground, I made you believe I was destroying your room. It is a good joke. Yes, yes, that's very funny. You know what, I think that's all the time we have. Hey! Ah! Ah! Okay, my focus is completely gone now. Then let's get back on track. It's Bible story time with Kellen. Hey, Kellen. Kellen. <laughs> Kellen! Oh, oh. <laughs> hey guys, sorry about that. What you listening to? Oh, um, I was listening to an old time radio show. That's what people did for home entertainment before television. I used to listen to them as a kid. How old are you, Kellen? Actually, I think it would be really cool if we could tell today's story like an old radio show with sound effects and everything. Is Han still there? Yeah. How did you? Take it away, Kellen. Okay, I now present Saul on the Road to Damascus, radio style. Jesus had been killed, and the people who didn't like what Jesus stood for thought they heard the last of him. But then a rumor started going around that Jesus came back from the dead, and more and more people were becoming followers of a new Jesus movement called The Way. They had to be stopped, and one of the people in charge of stopping them was Saul of Tarsus. <laughs> I am Saul of Tarsus, and I shall do everything I can to oppose Jesus Christ of Nazareth. <laughs> you there! Who? Me? Yes, you. Are you a follower of the way? I am! Seize him! <laughs> Saul went from place to place to find Jesus' followers and have them put into jail. And even put to death. Saul asked permission from the high priest to travel to other cities so he could arrest even more followers of the way. And that's why Saul was traveling on the road to Damascus. Saul and the men he was traveling with had letters that gave Saul permission to arrest any Jesus follower he wanted. He was determined to complete his mission. He was focused. But then an incredible thing happened. A light from heaven flashed all around Saul and his companions. Saul fell to the ground and he heard a voice. Saul, Saul, why are you opposing me? Who are you, Lord? I am Jesus. I am the one you are opposing. Now get up and go into the city. There you will be told what you must do. The men with Saul heard a sound but they were unable to speak. The men helped Saul to his feet, but when Saul opened his eyes, he couldn't see anything. So he had to be led to Damascus by hand. For three days, Saul didn't eat or drink anything. What will happen next? Will Saul regain his sight? Will he continue to oppose Jesus? You'll have to wait until next time to find out. What? You can't leave it like that, Kellen. That's how all old time radio shows end. You always have to wait until next time. Or you can read what happens next yourself. It's right here in Acts chapter nine. I don't like waiting. All right then. Besides, there's a lot to learn with just this part of the story. Saul was so focused on his mission that he was missing what was really important. It took a bright light on a road for God to really get Saul's attention. Okay, I get it. 
So focusing is a bad thing. No, I just think we need to check in with God a lot more to make sure we're focused on the right things. Great idea. Thanks, Kellen. Mm -hmm. Yep. You guys know where I'll be. I'll see you around. That was fun. I agree. Hey. Much ha fun. Hans, you're still here. Yeah. yeah. I am here to say. Reveal the question. Maybe a little more energy. Than... Ah. Reveal the question! That worked. Yeah. Uh, the question of the day is, how does God try to get your attention? Hmm. Hey, that's a good question. You know, he's never appeared to me in a bright light, I can tell you that. <laughs> me either. Hans? Yeah. Many times. How does God try to get your attention? Is it like a small voice inside you or a big crack of thunder? Or is it something we've never thought about? Mm -hmm. Talk about it together. Yeah. Sound waves. So mysterious. Mm -hmm. You're telling me. Hey, we'll see you next time on the So-and-So Show. Uh, is that me? Yeah. Oh, all right. Wow, what a story, guys. Saul did not like Jesus. As a matter of fact, he wanted to kill all of his followers. But that attitude Saul had didn't stop Jesus from having a plan for him. God had a plan for him. God just had to get his attention first. So it was crazy what he did. He made him blind, right? Now that would definitely get your attention. Now I love our question this week. How does God try to get your attention? God probably won't need to make you blind to get your attention, right? But he's talking to you in all kinds of ways. He's trying to get your attention in everything around you. Sometimes he'll try to use nature. Sometimes he'll try to use other people speaking wisdom over you. He can use the Bible. He can use a song. Anything is a tool that God can use to remind you of how awesome he is and the plan that he has for your life. It's just so neat. Sometimes you'll be listening to music and then you'll be like, oh man, that just reminds me of how great God is and how much he loves me. And sometimes a friend might tell you something and then maybe you heard it on a song the day before and you're like, oh my gosh, that's two times that somebody has told me that God loves me in this way. God's getting your attention. God wants to get your attention. God wants you to be able to hear him. God wants you to know what he's saying and he can use anything around you to let you know how much he loves you. What a cool thing to think about. I have a friend who wants to ask us some questions at the end just so that we can think a little bit more about this. Would you guys welcome that person and I will see you all later. Goodbye. Hey, thanks Ben, that was a great message. I love this time because we still get to learn, ponder, and grow together. So here are some questions for you guys to think about. How would you react if you were Saul in this story? Has God ever tried to get your attention? What adult can you ask to give you an example of a time God tried to get their attention? All right guys, it's been great to see you. I hope you have a great week. Goodbye for now.